Good evening. Oh, we've got lots of people coming on. This is fabulous. Welcome, everybody. It's nice to have you here. Um, to my the third September session, as I grandly called them. Um, if you haven't had a um, had a look at any of my blogs or September sessions yet, um, basically what I've done is I've put together some um, some lives and the blogs that go with them um, to do with um, developing your business or um, diversifying, pivoting, whatever word you want to use, adapting um, to um, work through this period in our, um, you know, uh, the, the economic climate, sorry, words, are, I'm finding words really difficult to find today. <laughs> My brain is all mush. Um, but basically, we're, we're, you know, we're likely to be going through an economic um, issue. A recession has been, um, the word recession has been used a few times uh, that might happen. Um, and it said that um, you can recession proof your business. You can um, do things to help your business through any hard times that are going on. Um, and I really want, you know, the reason I set up the Home Baking Business Community um, two years ago, it was over two years ago now, was to help um, people who want to, who had a passion for baking, who wanted to, you know, earn a living from it, um, giving them the, the tools and the, you know, the ideas and the, the help to actually do that. Um, and it really is a, a bit of a mission of mine to make sure that those people that have businesses actually keep them and grow them. Um, it's it, it's really awful when I see someone saying in the group, oh, I'm just giving up. It's no good. I can't compete with this, that and the other. Um, because it doesn't have to be that way. It really doesn't have to be that way. <clears throat> and there are always ways around the competition there's low prices. There's always ways around people not wanting to buy in my area. Um, it's just a question of um, diversifying, adapting, thinking out the box a little bit because there are ways of doing it. I promise you, I promise you there are ways of doing it. Um, so these three sessions, uh, the four sessions, actually, because there's one next week as well, are I'm trying to um, give you a, a sort of nudge in the right direction, if you like, um, to make you see that, it, you know, it's not a question of, oh, I just have to give it all up. It's a question of, right, well, this might not, what I'm doing at the moment might not be working. What else can I do um, to make sure that my business um, not only stays afloat, but, but grows and makes a really good profit? Um, so as always, oh, my glasses are filthy. <laughs> Let's just give them a clean, otherwise I can't see. As always, I've got my blog post that I will put up as well, which is basically what I'm saying this evening. So if you're a reader rather than a listener, um, you might want to have a look at the blog post because it's very similar to what I'm about to say. Um, so this is the third in the series of the September sessions. The first one I talked about... Um, ways you can find alternative incomes to do with baking. I sound awful. Oh, <laughs> do I? <laughs> oh, no. Um, evening, Susan. Um, it looks super pretty. I think. Um, yeah, the first, the first week, two weeks ago, was to do with, you know, alternative incomes, ways that you can create an income from your passion, your baking passion, without necessarily having to bake. Um, so that was two weeks ago. And then last week I talked about um, ideal clients and finding the clients um, you need to sell the products that you're diversifying into. Um, I talked a little bit about, for example, um, you know, perhaps self-publishing on Amazon, creating books or guides or recipes or journals or something, you know, things like that. Um, that's just one example of things that you can do. Um, so last week I talked about how how to find customers for that. Um, oh, Natalie, it's four thirty a.m. I don't know how you do it, Natalie. How do you? Do <laughs> when do you sleep, my lovely? <laughs> um, 
Um, let's put it, yeah, there's a real fear uh, around, around the recession. Yeah, definitely lean to more positive outlook. Love the, oh yes, love that you're doing these sessions. Well, I'm, you know, it, it it's good, it's good to try and help if I can. Um, thank you, lovely, it's nice of you to say that. Um, but it, it is, and, and it comes back to my three favorite words. If you've heard me speak, you've heard me banging on about these. Determination, perseverance, and resilience. If you've got those three things, and you're determined that your business will work, it will work, you will find a way. Um, and as I've said over the last couple of weeks, particularly for us bakers, if you see yourself as a business owner who bakes, you're much more likely to be able to diversify and adapt than if you just think of yourself as a baker who sells cakes. Change your mindset um, and suddenly you'll find that the possibilities are there. This, um, or everything I'm talking about this evening is sort of things that I've realised and things that I've learned and things that have happened to me. So I'm just sort of passing it all on, really. <laughs> you know, once I realised that I wasn't just a baker who sold cakes, I was a business owner. Then it was like, oh, my gosh, you know, this is serious now. I've got a business. I run a business. What do I need to do to make my business successful? Um and the change in mindset was the thing that that really, you know, spurred me on, if you like. So this evening, um, if you haven't looked at the blogs or the lives for the last two weeks, um, then do have a look back. I'll put all the links up. Um, they're in the group. The lives are in the, the guides the files. No, the guides section. They're also on my YouTube channel. Um, but. I'll get all the links out to you, not a problem. Um, but this evening, oh, excuse me, I'm drinking Coke, so I shall, <laughs> I shall get all bubbly. I'm going to be talking about, um, you know, moving, actually moving your baking into higher end and higher ticket and higher profit areas, mainly wedding cakes. Um, the thing is with, with you know, baking, you're either at the the end of um, uh, my baking is for people who want little luxuries, who want treats, or you're at the end um, of. Um, I say it's not really an end to end thing. This really, it's it's a different different type of sale. Um, people who were going who are going to want to buy something anyway, uh, like for, for example, wedding cakes. People will always want wedding cakes. There's no, you know, there's no two ways about it. People um, who are planning a wedding, who want a decent wedding cake, will have a budget for a wedding cake. Now, people won't always necessarily have budgets for, you know, treat boxes and, um, you know, brandy deliveries and those kind of things. It may be that those things um, uh, tail off a little bit for those of you that do that. But people will always want wedding cakes. Quite a few people will always want a decent um, birthday cake. You know, you've got to think about it as um, solving someone's, solving your customer's problem. What problem have they got? Now, not might, might not be a problem as we see it. It's a problem as in, where can I get a birthday cake from? My five-year-old is having a birthday. I don't know the one end of the oven from the other, but I need a really good birthday cake for him, her. Um, that is that is a problem that somebody has. OK. Um, and as I've always said, there are different customers, you know, different ideal customers. You've got your little, you've got your Harrods. There will always be people that will want to pay um, a decent amount for a decent birthday cake and a quality birthday cake. But if we take that even further, there are always people that want wedding cakes. You know, in the last couple of weeks, even though there's been talk of, you know, higher energy costs and all this kind of things. There are people that have paid me deposits for five, six hundred pound wedding cakes. Um, so that is always going to happen. I really don't think, you know, there obviously be some people that will budget a little bit and um, and want to make their budget go a bit further. But there will be people that will want to pay for a decent wedding cake. OK, because as, as far as weddings go, um, a wed the wedding cake is almost the, the, the you know, the centrepiece. It's the the thing that. You know, you've got your flowers, 
you've got your venue, you've got your flowers, you've got your wedding dress, you've got your wedding cake. It's one of the, the big ones in a wedding. So they want to have a really good one. Okay. Now, um, when we talk about um, moving into to making wedding cakes, if you don't already, um, there are a few things that you need to, to know or need to know about. Um, and I'm, I'm talking, as I said just now, I'm talking from the perspective of me when I first started my baking business, not really having much of a clue about wedding cakes, um, but taking on that steep learning curve um, to where I am now, <laughs> which is almost exclusively wedding cakes. I do very little else now. Um, I mean, admittedly, I do, you know, my trainings and my books. And so I do have alternative incomes. I don't rely wholly on wedding cakes, but then I don't take that many bookings because of all the other things I do. I could, you know, book in three cakes a week for quite a lot of the year. Um, but I choose not to. I choose only to have one and then do my other things the rest of the week. Um, but... Yeah, there, is, there are lots of things that I've picked up along the way that I realise that you need to have. OK, so I'm going to go through those. So I'm going to talk mainly about wedding cakes and I'll talk a little bit about, um, you know, corporate and events and other other higher end things. Um, OK, so if you're thinking of going into to wedding cakes, um, I mean, first of all, there's no reason why you shouldn't. Don't have this sort of, um, oh, I can't do that thing. I'll talk about that a bit more in a minute. But have that determined head on. Have that. Yes, of course, I can do it. It's ridiculous. <laughs> I just need to learn a few things. So the first thing you really need, and this is stating the obvious a little bit, is you need the technical know how you need to be able to you know, bake a sponge in different sizes. You need to be able to produce different flavors. You need to be able to produce fruit cakes, all those kind of things. Um, and you need to be able to do that fairly routinely without worrying too much about it. Because that, in a way, that is the easy bit, the actual baking of the, <laughs> the sponges and the fruit cakes and things. That's the easy bit. Um, the more complicated, nerve wracking bit, if there is one, is that, you know, the decorating bit. So you've got to have a really good sound knowledge. If you don't feel you have a really good sound knowledge, then get one. There's going to be a lot of tough love from Annie this evening, a lot of plain talking. Um, so if you're there thinking, oh, I can't bake sponges, I can't do this, I can't learn how to do it. <laughs> it's as simple as that. Um, I'm, I'm of the belief that with a very, very few exceptions, anyone can learn how to do anything. Um, I think the, the problem that a lot of people has is they try something once, it goes disastrously wrong, and they think that that's it, they can't do it, and they'll never try it again. I could talk for hours about this subject. Um, and in fact, I've written articles and things for there's one coming out in the metro soon about it um but basically we learn by making mistakes that's how we learn so if your first attempt at whatever it is goes wrong then try it again and try and do something slightly differently so that next time it goes right um you know find out where to learn things from um you know just take in as much information as you can from other people i learned so much um, when I started baking from, you know, um, going online, um, TV programs, you know, things like the Great British Bake Off and you know, programs similar to that. You can learn, pick up an awful lot, you know, Mary Berry and all those kind of people um, and Facebook groups, um, following other people on Instagram, you know, just soak in as much knowledge as you can. OK, so you need to be able to, you know, bake your basic um, cake. Um, you've got to be able to know how to level it, dowel it, stack it, um, you know, use your cake cards, those kind of things. OK, you've got to you've got to know how to do that. You've got to have a fairly good range of decorating skills. Um, now, a bit of tough love coming up here. It's really no good, particularly when you first start out saying, oh, I don't do buttercream or, oh, I don't do fondant. Yes, you can specialise. But particularly when you're starting out in your, your wedding cake venture, you are going to take away half your potential custom if you don't do one or the other of those. OK, if you find fondant cakes difficult, learn how to do it, practice it, get a dummy cake, 
get some fondant, practice it. If it goes wrong, strip it all off, start again. Just keep going. Be determined and be resilient because you will learn how to do it. <laughs> there's no, you know, there's no two ways about it. You will learn how to do it. Um, you've just got to, you've just got to want it to happen. Okay. Um, so get yourself as many skills as you can. When I first started my business, I wasn't that skilled in, in much, to be honest. Um, so I had to learn all about roll icing. I had to learn all about sugar paste. I had to learn all about sugar flowers. I did uh, diplomas in all of those. Um, really intense. To, and I had to invest money in that. You know, there's no two ways about it. You know, you have to invest. Um, and from learning those basic skills, I've then practiced and practiced and improved and improved, done things slightly my own way. Um, and now I can do most things that I'm asked to do. Um, and in fact, things that I'm not asked to do, um, like, for example, last year, no, the year before, um, I had a booking for a, a seven tier buttercream flour cake. At that point, I hadn't done a lot of buttercream flowers. Um, but I knew that I had over a year to actually learn how to do them. So that's what I did. I didn't say, oh, no, I can't do buttercream flowers. Sorry. I learned how to do it. I mean, that was a 700 pound, 750 pound cake. So I jolly well learned how to do it. <laughs> There's no two ways about it. You know, I, you know, I had a year to make sure that I knew how to do it properly. Um, so, as I say, if you're determined. Um to learn these skills, then you will get these skills. There's no two ways about it. Um, so, you know, things like um, making a drape, making sugar flowers, piping, all those kind of things, learn how to do them, really get good at them. Um, really, you know, make it, make it your mission, if you like, to really produce some really good stuff. Get some dummy cakes um sorted out you know the polystyrene dummies you can get them quite cheaply actually at sort of average about three four pounds actually for a dummy um cakes you can ice those with fondant and then you can go mad um you know having a go decorating them practicing with it um and if you do a um three-tiered dummy cake you can then photograph it with different things on it and build up your portfolio and that's what I did, um, you know, different coloured sugar flour or a different coloured drape or different coloured ribbon that makes it look different. You can then, you know, build up a portfolio. Um, so, yeah, so that's the first thing you've got to, you know, get learning and get get the skills up. If you haven't already, I, I know that many of you got all these skills already because um, I see it all the time. Um, the second thing you've got to to get, obviously, which a lot of you have already, most of you have already, is that the business set up, but with regards to wedding cakes more specifically. So, for example, in your terms and conditions, which you must have, you really if you've got a business and you're selling things, you must have terms and conditions. Um, so you've got to get wedding cake specific ones and um, terms and conditions are there to protect you and they're there to protect your customer. Um, so they're sort of a set of rules, if you like. Um, that, you know, you'll say you'll do this and you'll say, and I expect my customers to do this. And then it's all hunky dory. I've done various sessions on terms and conditions, if you want more on that. Um, but you've got to get those specifically for, you know, wedding cakes or whatever it is you're going into. Um, pricing. Got to get your pricing right. That sounds stating the obvious, doesn't it? <laughs> state in the bleeding office um when you first go from um this is what happened to me when i first sort of went from making brownies and cookies at markets and things going into wedding cakes putting a price on a wedding cake it just seems so much and you think oh my gosh that's such a lot of money <laughs> for a cake who is going to pay for that but you've got to you know put your business head on remember you're running a business and your, your business is cakes. Um, so you've got to work it all out properly. Now, I've done a couple of sessions on pricing. I've got a, um, a course about pricing. I've done lots and lots about pricing. 
um, you've you've got to work it all out properly. If you pluck a, a number from the air, you'll have no idea whether you're making any money or not. And the idea is that you make money in your business. There's no point in having a business if you don't make money. That's what we're here for. So you've got to get your pricing right. Um, and people will pay. People will pay. Um, and I always say that, um, yes, some people will think you're too expensive, but also some people will think you're too cheap. Honestly, <laughs> some people will think you're too cheap. Um, and yes, some people will not take you up on your quotes. But again, I always say that if everybody that you quote for takes you up on your quotes, the chances are you're not charging enough. Um, you've got to have that, um, you know, you, you've got to be at the level where you've got some um, taking you up on your quotes and some not. I'll come on to that a little bit more in a minute. Um, what else do you need? Oh, you, you get your ordering systems right. Get your um, communication with your potential couples. Um, so it's slightly more involved with the wedding couple than it perhaps is for a birthday cake or, you know, for other things, um, because you've got to you've got to sort of end up having a bit of a relationship with them in that, um, you know, you talk to them about your cake, you send them a quote, perhaps after a week or so you haven't heard, you might want to send an email saying, oh, you know, is everything all right? Did you see my quote? Any feedback on it? That kind of thing. And you might get some people say, oh, yes, yes, we'd love to. Here's the deposit or the initial payment. Um, but some you won't hear from again. And that's right. That's all right. <laughs> You've got to get used to not hearing from people again. Honestly, it's, you know, water off a duck's back now. Um, what else do we need? Oh, yes. And you need insurance. Make sure your business insurance covers you going to venues. Um, lots of venues do ask for your insurance. Not all of them do. Um, some that I, some venues that I use and have been to a couple of times, just take my certificate and have it on file. Um, some ask for it for every one. Some don't ask at all. Um, but if you, for some venues, if you haven't got insurance, they won't let you. Um, they won't let you provide the cake. So, and it's not very much. It really isn't. Um, but do the research on that one. Talking about research, this is number three. If you are um, you know, serious about going into wedding cakes, you've got to know about wedding cakes. You've got to do your research. What's the latest trend? What what are um, you know, the latest looks? What are what are couples after? Bear in mind that your average couple, um one of those couples, and if if we talk about you know a bride and a groom, um it's usually the bride, before she's even been engaged, she will be looking up wedding cakes. She'll be looking at wedding dresses, wedding flowers and wedding cakes before she's even engaged. So there's an awful lot, you know, long time <laughs> that she's going to be looking. Um, she might not admit it. She might have a secret folder where she puts things, you know, waiting for it. Um, men, even when it's a groom and a groom, not so much. I, In my experience, not so much. Um, they're a bit more sort of, you know, take it or leave it, to be honest. Um, although, no, I, uh, no, actually, that's unfair because I did have one groom who, um, you know, his um, same sex couple, groom and a groom. And he was really into, you know, getting the perfect wedding cake. And could I have a look at this? And could you do that? And so he was really into it. But on the whole, the types of couples that I provide cakes for, it's the bride. And it's the bride who has got acres of um pictures of cakes that she likes so do your research do what's you know find out what's um what's popular um subscribe or go on to websites of magazines um you know not so much cake decorating ones because they don't often have um wedding cakes in um but sites like hitched um rock my wedding bride book all those kind of things um they will have sort of what's trending um, on them. Pinterest. If I had a pound for every Pinterest picture I was shown, <laughs> I wouldn't need to make cakes. Um, 
more often than not, when a bride says to me, I'd like something like this, it's a Pinterest picture. So get onto Pinterest, get yourself a Pinterest account so that you can put yours on there so yours can be found as well. Um, and yeah, find out what's going on in the, the wedding cake world. Be on top of it. Um, because if you can do that, then you then, and this is my fourth point, you are then becoming the expert on it. You can then um, guide your couples and advise your couples. Um, they, the average couple who are wanting a wedding cake usually haven't got a clue about anything wedding cake. They don't, they don't know how big it needs to be. They don't know what flavors it needs to be. They don't, you know, they don't know how to buy. They don't know anything. Assume that your couples don't know anything and you are going to be helping them through that entire process. OK, so, for example, if they've said that they want, um, you know, a chocolate covered cake covered in chocolate and it's going to go in a marquee in July, it's up to you to say, I really don't advise that <laughs> because that's not going to work. You get my drift. You know, you're there to advise them to make sure that what they end up with is perfect. OK. Um, I always have my when I'm talking to couples, I have my list. I don't know, I think it fell off, it fell off down the back of my bookshelf. Um, but I have my list of, you know, my three tiers sizes and how many they serve, for example. So if they say, um, oh, you know, we're having 100 guests, but we perhaps want to serve about 70 of them, you know, enough enough cake for 70 people. I can then say, oh, yes, you need a this, this and this size. Um, so, you know, you can be recommending to them. All right. Um, and as I've said in, in, in my blog, I just said just now, whatever you're quoting to start with, if, when you've not done many weddings, you, it's going to seem enormous to you. And you're going to think, no one's ever going to pay this. <laughs> but they will. They will. Most of them, as I've said, not all of them, but most of them. Um, don't ever, you know, a, bit, a, a quick word about your pricing. Um, don't apologise for your price. Don't say, oh, I know it's a lot, but don't justify it. Your price is your price. You are a professional wedding cake baker. This is what you charge. Yeah. Um, you don't go into Harrods and find all the staff going, oh, yes, I know it's a bit expensive, but isn't it nice? No, no, no. You know, you go into Harrods. You want, you want it? This is the price. And it's the same with your wedding cakes. This is what I charge. This is the price. <laughs> you're a business owner, remember. You're a business owner. Um, give them advice. Always be helpful. Even if they don't choose you, even if they go somewhere else, they will remember that you were that really helpful um, wedding cake maker. And they will remember you. Okay. Um. Which brings me to number five, which brings me to the, the resilient, be resilient. Um, and I've said this a couple of times that whenever you give a quote. If they don't respond and don't take you up on your quote, it does not mean you are too expensive. There can be hundreds of reasons why um, a couple don't take you up on your quote. It may be, you know that they're actually not getting married after all. It may be that they've decided to go abroad and they're not going to have a cake. It may be that Aunt Gladys has offered to, you know, to make them one, whatever. Um, but don't think that, you know, a couple that doesn't book you doesn't mean you're too expensive. They might actually feed you back and say, oh, it's a bit out of our budget, in which case you say, oh, OK, well, um, you know, Give me an indication of your budget and I'll tell you what I can do for that price. And there's always a way around it, you know. <coughs> um, because basically, and I've said this a, a load of times as well, that when you're selling to someone, they will sell if they know you, if they like you and if they trust you. No like and trust is absolutely vital. You're not going to buy a wedding cake from someone who you try to contact took three weeks to reply to you and then was very dismissive when they did email you. You're unlikely to want to buy from someone like that, are you? 
Uh, whereas if someone sort of replies the next day and is very chatty and takes an interest in your wedding um, and asks you questions about, you know, what colour scheme you're having and where where's your venue? Oh, that's a lovely venue. Those kind of things. If you're genuinely interested in what they're doing and you genuinely want to help them, that will shine through. And even if they don't book you, they will see you very, very positively um, and perhaps, you know, pass you on to somebody else who they think might be perfect for you. So, you know, don't burn your bridges. <laughs> That's what I'm saying there. Um, and the, another phrase I've heard in business is don't sell to them, help them buy. So don't try and sell them a cake, help them to buy a cake. If it happens to be your cake, even better. But if you are genuinely helpful and genuinely want them to have the best experience, then that, as I said, that will shine through and they will they will really appreciate that. OK. Once you've got all that in place and you're ready to sell and you're wanting to get customers, what you've got to do then. And this is again, this is speaking, obviously, really, you've got to get visible. Um, think back to last week about was it last week or the week before? That's no, last week. Talking about finding clients. OK, if up to now you've done like I did, I did market trading. So my ideal customer when I was market trading wasn't my ideal customer for weddings. A little bit of a crossover possibly. But, you know, if I was, you know, once I decided that weddings was where I wanted to be, I had to change my focus of who I was talking to and where I was um, going online particularly to find my wedding um, customers. Okay. So you've got to, you know, build a solid social media presence. Instagram. Um because Instagram is so visual, you can get a lot of, I've got a lot of interest from Instagram, a lot of customers from Instagram. TikTok, not so much. Um, think about who your customers are, who is likely to buy. Are they going to be regular TikTok people? Um, Instagram is more likely, Pinterest definitely, although Pinterest works in a slightly different way to Instagram. Pinterest is more of a search engine, but that's what you want. You want to get your cakes on there. You want to get things on there so that people can search and find you in there. Um, get yourself on Google Business, Google Business Profile, because you want to get yourself on the front page of a search, particularly for, you know, wedding cakes in your area. Wedding cakes, you know, the wedding cakes near me thing. You want to be on there. Um Get a website. If you're serious about wedding cakes, you need a website, but you need a way of getting people to that website. Just having the website isn't necessarily enough unless your search, your SEO is, you know, absolutely spectacular. Um, you need, you know, your Google and then you need to, to direct people. You need good sort of road signage to your website. And then once they're, they're on your website, you need to convert them into sales. Um, so you need all sorts of lovely things on your website, lovely pictures, contact me, make it easy for them to talk to you, um, that kind of thing. OK, so get visible. <coughs> um, good PR. Good PR is absolute gold. Uh, I have done a, um, a blog and a live on PR. And in fact, I'm going to have my lovely friend Nicola. Um, she's going to come in to the the home baking business community in October to talk to us about um, PR and how to get it and things. Um, she came into the society, those of my society members, um, and she did a session in there for us, but she's also going to come into the big group as well and talk to us. Um, I've been working with her since January um, and I've just got loads of stuff already uh, because she's taught me how to do it. I mean, this up on the wall here, that's from Woman Magazine. So I was in Woman Magazine in August. Um, I've been in Hello Online, in The Sun, um, BBC, all sorts of things. And it's, although it, it, I mean, it has increased my sales, they don't directly increase sales, but it gets people knowing who you are, it gets people knowing your face, knowing your logo, knowing what you do. Um, it's absolutely vital. Okay. Um, and the key to PR, um, I do talk about it in my blog and in my live, but the key to PR is having a story that, inter that interests the journalists. 
Okay, just having something to sell, journalists aren't interested in that. For example, the the woman magazine up there, the focus there was people, women who have changed their lives after the age of 50, um, um, which is me. I was a primary teacher and then I stopped all that, set up my wedding cake business and now make wedding cakes. Um, so that kind of thing is interesting for a journalist. And everybody has a story. Even if you think you haven't, you have. Um, it's just a question of finding it and getting to the bottom of it. Um, so, yeah, so if you're um, PR, watch out for Nicola in October because she'll be she's she's brilliant. She was an ex-journalist. She knows her stuff. She knows lots of journalists um, and she knows how to get people seen. She's brilliant. Um so that that sort of wedding cakes in a nutshell, if you like, <laughs> um, is easy, isn't it? It's easy once you know how. A um, little bit about events and corporate. Now, I must admit, I don't do much um, in this area, uh, but I know I know how to sort of go about it. The first thing, uh, it comes back to your ideal client again. If you're thinking that you want to do a few more corporate, you know, things um you know selling to businesses um then think about who your ideal client is where they're going to be hanging out because you want to get in front of them to so that they can see what you're doing pr is a good start particularly local if you're talking about local businesses um local businesses will often keep their eyes on local press and local radio and local news um so if you pop up you know, as someone who, you know, makes wonderful cupcakes with logo um, things on them for, for businesses. They'll be like, oh, that's great. That's a good idea. Yeah, we'll have that for our staff Christmas do or whatever it is. Yeah. Um, get visible and get known. Um, and find out about the businesses in your area that you think are likely to be potential customers. You've got to be a bit proactive here. Um, you've got to get visible. Think about um, possibly local charities. Do businesses engage with local charities? In which case, find out about the charities, get interested and support them as well and get visible while you do so that people know who you are and know your business and, you know, know, know you, start to know you. Um, for business to business, LinkedIn is really good to get into. Um, I do have a LinkedIn profile, but because I don't do much business to business, I really don't do anything with it, <laughs> um, but it is a good way to find other, you know, business owners in your area. Um, and if you want to find out more about LinkedIn, just Google it in Facebook. There'll be a group somewhere, I'm sure. Excuse me, I'm sniffing now. Um, there'll be a Facebook group, I'm sure, that will talk about LinkedIn and how to do a LinkedIn thing. So find out about it. Um and yeah, be proactive, research local businesses. Um, if local businesses, for example, um, what example have I got in? Oh, yeah. Um, if, for example, you've got a local business that does solar panels, they might well be doing things during um, if there's a, you know, a national week for um, energy saving or something like that, um, some kind of eco week. They, they might be doing an event or doing some sort of, so, you know, um, highlighting during that week. So start to sort of join up the dots and, and um, possibly even suggest things to them. You know, you've got to go out there as a business owner. Remember, you're a business owner who makes cakes, not a cake maker who sells. You're a business owner. You have got to stick your neck out a little bit and go and find, you know, suggest things to these businesses. How would you like, you know, um, for your next event to have lovely cupcakes with your logos on? Wouldn't that look lovely? That kind of thing. Yeah. The worst they can do is say no. So <laughs> you're, you're losing nothing, really. Aren't you? um, make business cards. Get business cards sorted out and always have some with you because you never know when you're going to come, come across someone that is going to need your services. Um, I've given out cards in all sorts of places, you know, dentist waiting rooms, bank queues, pubs, restaurants. When I'm out with, you know, my friends and I start talking to someone. Oh, yeah, yeah here's my, my card. You never know who you're going to come in contact with. Um, have your what's known as your elevator pitch. 
ready. So when you meet someone new, you can say, oh, hi, yes, um, I'm I'm Annie. I run Annie Benny business and I do training for uh, home baking businesses. And I also run a wedding cake business. You know, you never know. You might be talking to someone who's, oh, yeah, um, someone I know was looking for a baker for this, that and the other. You know, connections are made that way. Um, so, you know, the, 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 the sort of highlight, the headline really to all of this, and I shall say it again, is be a business owner who bakes, not a baker who sells their cakes. Have that shift, have that mindset, um, and you will, you will grow your business. You, you know, you will, you, you will be determined to. Um, the last thing I'm going to say, because we're, of course, it's 10 past, 10 past 8 already. I have waffled on for quite a long time. Um, if you are serious about going into wedding cakes um, and wedding cake sales, I do have um, a course for you, um, which I've actually reduced the price of slightly in light of, you know, this evening and um, what's going on at the moment. Um, it's a two part course. You can either buy the part separately or together. And if you buy both parts, I'm throwing in my extra pricing course with my uh, pricing spreadsheet and things. Um, so part one of my course talks about the practical side. So uh, recipes, um, doweling cakes, stacking cakes, transporting cakes, using buttercream ganache, sugar paste, um, designing, making sugar flowers, all the design um, practical side. And then the second session is the one all to do with the business. So you've got terms and conditions, pricing, marketing, consultations, all those kind of things. And there's a whole load of um, templates and documents that you can use and adapt for your own business. Um, so as I said, I've just reduced those um, because that's just the way I am. Um, for, you know, current situation. So the two different parts, if you want to buy them separately, they're 47 each. There's quite a, quite a lot in each one. There's quite a few, you know, um, videos, there's workbooks, there's the presentations with the links to various places. So there's, there's a lot in each one. If you want to buy both of them and get the extra bonus of the pricing course, that's 87 for both of those. What I will do is I will, um, as always, I'll put the link to the blog and link to all of these in the group for you. Um, and my social media will be awash with this course over the next week or so. Um, so if you can't find it, just go onto my social media, Annie Bennett Business on Instagram, um, and it'll be all over there. Otherwise, just message me or email me or whatever, and I will point you in the right direction. <laughs> um, but yeah, but... You know, the, to, to to sign off now, because it is now 45 minutes in and I only try and do half an hour usually. Um, what I said right at the beginning, be a, a business who bakes, be prepared to adapt your business, um, be prepared to do things differently, be prepared to learn things, be prepared to make mistakes because it's actually through the mistakes that you then you then get your skills yeah um don't be afraid to make those mistakes because that's how you learn things and that's how you become a master at something no one is born with the ability to make a beautiful sugar rose you know that's just ridiculous um no one's first attempt at a sugar rose looks like a sugar rose <laughs> mine certainly didn't <laughs> um you have to try things out you have to learn them uh, and if if you are on that mindset of I want to make this really good and I want to learn as much as I can you can't fail you really can't fail um, so let's hope that my mission of stopping businesses stopping um, is successful and that everyone um, diversifies and and keeps going with their business because if being self-employed in my opinion is is just brilliant I love it um, I won't ever go back to being employed um, and I will do anything I can to make sure that I stay self-employed. Um, that's my determinism. 
my, de my determinism, determination, that's the noun. <laughs> <coughs> so there we go. So look out for the links for all those bits and pieces, my lovelies. Um, I hope it's been useful for you. Next week, I'm going to talk a little bit about um, planning and strategy for all these changes you know if you've decided right yes I'm going to diversify I'm going to adapt I'm going to do all these different things you need to have some sort of plan and strategy and next week is when I'm going to be talking about ways that you can do that okay so be with me next week and I'll sort of round up the September sessions as well um, because the week after I'll be in Greece first week of October I'm going to be in Greece on holiday um, and they won't be alive that week but next week Again, I'll say I'll, I'll do the planning and strategy and I'll wrap it all up. OK, so there we go. So have a good week, my lovelies. Have a good weekend and a good week. And I will see you um, next Wednesday. All right. Toodaloo. Take care now. <laughs>